We, we come to the last presentation by Ilias Puchner. He is uh, already postdoc at uh, the Ludwig Maximilians University in Munich, and his title is Force and Function. Now, uh, we are curious to listen to you and find out what that is. Thank you very much, Professor Huber, for this kind introduction, and it's a real pleasure for me to, uh, to present one of my PhD projects to this audience. So, um, mechanical forces play a pivotal role in life, and during evolution, diverse mechanical properties of proteins have evolved, ranging from rigid structures, such as the cytoskeleton of the cell, to active components like molecular force sensors, whose mechanically induced conformational changes are translated to biochemical signaling cascades. A prime example of a biological system that needs adaption to forces is our muscle. And uh, we all know that our muscles get stronger after exercise. But how do they know where and when to grow? To see this, we have to zoom inside up to the smallest protein building blocks to see what happens during contraction. Muscle fibers contain millions of the microscopic sarcomere units, which are stringed together like a chain and generate contraction. In their inner nanocosm, a sort of molecular rope pulling takes place. Myosin uh, motors are teamed up in strands and pulled with their arms on the entered actin ropes to generate contraction. At their center, these motor proteins are aligned and connected through the elastic titan scaffold. This spider net-like structure now gets distorted due to unbalanced motor strands, and it contains the molecular force sensor titan kinase as a sort of referee. Um, we now address the question whether and how titan kinase can get activated by forces. And in a combination of molecular dynamic simulations and single molecule force spectroscopy experiments, we could show that its ball of wool-like unwinding results in the opening of a binding pocket primed for docking of the small molecule ATP. Titan kinase is now activated like a mechanical fuse and marks other reporter molecules with parts of ATP. These reporters now spread the signal of the force imbalance and regulate muscle gene expression and protein turnover. So in the following short time, I would like to show you actually how I was able to measure this mechanical activation. And in order to mimic the mechanical strain in the M-band, I constructed an atomic force microscope and performed single molecule force spectroscopy experiments. The protein construct which consists of the force sensor titan kinase and the surrounding IT domains, is contacted with the tip of an AFM cantilever and stretched while force extension traces are recorded. Now, um, I would like to uh, steal the trick introduced by Professor Wüthrich uh, yesterday to demonstrate how this actually works. Right? So this is now our folded polypeptide chain, which we stretch with the force microscope, and at a certain force, whether force is high enough, a structural element or a whole protein domain breaks and unfolds, which results in a drop in force. If further stretched, the force rises again until the next domain breaks, right? And this causes this sort of like pattern, what you see here in these force extension traces. At the end of this trace, you see five peaks whose number and contour length increment correlate exactly with the number of IG domains present in the protein construct. Therefore, the initial low force part must be due to the sequential opening and unfolding of the force sensor titan kinase. Now, um, if we superimpose many of these cycles and zoom in this region of titan kinase, we see that it unfolds over five distinct energy barriers, always in the same order. In the presence of the co-substrate ATP, however, which is necessary for the biochemical signaling, an additional force peak is observed, shown in red, which is caused by binding of ATP to the mechanically open binding pocket and through its interaction with uh, the amino acids. Now, experiments at different opening times of the binding pocket reveal this non-equilibrium binding kinetics 
which allows the determination of all kinetic parameters. And interestingly, a mutation of an amino acid located in a binding pocket reduces the affinity and enlarges the off rate more than sixfold. Now, uh, we wanted to know the structural interpretation of this mechanical activation process and to identify the structural elements that cause the activation. In order to do this, we uh, compared our experiments with molecular dynamic simulations. And in order to do this, uh, I developed a method that allows the precise determination of the number of unfolded amino acids, in this case with an error of only 2%. The comparison now reveals a complete mechanical activation and unfolding pathway, which is the following. The first force peak is caused by um, a 23 amino acid long linker, which is removed from Titan kinase. At the second force peak, a beta sheet that acts as a sort of zipper breaks. And now the red alpha helix, which blocks the yellow ATP binding pocket, can get removed so that the ATP binding site gets accessible, as you saw in the 3D animation. Now ATP can bind, and through its interaction with lysine 36 and methionine 34 causes the additional energy barrier. So if you now have a look at the activation forces, which are 40 piconewton and correspond to a, a unbalance of only five to eight single uh, motor domains in a myosin filament, you see that they are very much in the ph physiological range. Therefore, we conclude that Titan kinase acts as a force sensor in your muscle which regulates protein turnover and gene expression. So um, I'm at the end of my talk, and I would like to very much thank my supervisor, Hermann Gaub, my collaboration partners, and Thank you very much, all participants and uh, contributors to this great meeting, the International Doctorate Program Nanobiotechnology, which is part of the Elite Network of Bavaria. And now you can clap. Thank you for your attention. Well, thank you, uh, Elias, uh, also for the demonstration. So one can use I stole uh, a, a, a belt not only to show how long a chromatin uh, uh, is, but also how titan uh, looks like and may be unfolded. Now, uh, politicians uh, want to see possible applications, translation from basic research to application. Now, titan, muscle, perhaps physical uh, strengths uh, are uh, related. So what would you tell Minister Hoibisch to support uh, this kind of research because there is a chance to improve health and physical conditions of his uh, Bavarian population? Okay. Um, so first of all, th there are some diseases where people don't have their natural strength of muscles, right? And obviously what we found out is that this enzyme acts as a force sensor and controls the growth of muscle. So um, there would be medical applications, but also on the other hand, athletes, for instance, want to have strong muscles. And so um, this is... Uh, an effect that we um, discovered which regulates growth of muscle and maybe it could help to uh, uh, improve training for instance. So it's already known that eccentric exercise, which is if you, um, uh, if you um, use your muscle at the maximum what it, can, what it can hold, then a maximum of force is transduced throughout all filaments and then a maximum of force sensors are activated. So maybe this could uh, help to improve training. Well, thank you, Elias. Thank you. And uh, this closes the science part. Uh, there is a finishing remark by Minister Hoibisch, and then I think uh, we have uh, uh, performance again. Thank you.